have the interfaces done for all the basic spell types that we want for our game, uh, let's go ahead and start implementing it. So I'm going to create a new C Sharp script here. And I'm just going to call it spell because we'll just start off with the iSpell interface. And we'll open that up in Mono Develop. All right, so we're not going to be inheriting from Mono Behavior, but I am going to implement iSpell. And I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of these methods. And let's just go ahead, right click, refactor, implement implicit, and hit enter. Uh, there we go. We have all of the, the methods that we actually have to work with. Now, some of these we actually set up as properties, I believe. Yes, right up here. Uh, so let's start off. We'll work with those first. So we're going to come back. And I just seen that little reminder here. We actually forgot to add a description. All of our spells are going to have a description so that when you hover over the tooltip, we can actually see what they do. Uh, so let's go ahead. We're just going to undo the implementation here. I'm going to come back in and make another property for that. So it's going to be of type string. And I guess we'll just call it, uh, let's just call it description. And we'll also have a get and a set. Don't forget your semicolon. And I'll go ahead and get rid of this. Uh, while I'm here, let me just take a quick look at the to-do list, see what else we had here. I can add to spell book. Uh, we'll work on that later. We don't even have a spell book yet. So now I'm going to come back in, make sure you've saved it. And we'll right click and we'll just do the uh, implementation again. Uh, there we go. Now we have this. So let's go ahead and actually start working on some of this. Now I wish it would have implemented all those methods the way I had them set up here, at least in the order. Uh, but that's fine. I'll just be moving things around as we go through. Uh, but the first thing I want to make is a constructor. So I'm going to come down here and just make a public. And we'll call it spell because the class is called spell. And in here I actually want to assign some default values for all the properties that we have. Uh, so that's basically all of these. So I'm just actually going to go ahead and copy them all in. I just have a list of them. I'm going to put a lot of spaces here just so I know. All right. Uh, it's going to be a lot of cleanup here, but I just want to have a list. It's pretty late here, and I just want to make sure I don't screw anything up. So I'm going to go ahead and, set ahead and say name is equal to, uh, and I'm just going to say need name. And the effect. Well, this is actually going to be attached um, to an actual game object that has to be dragged in. And we're going to be using uh, the resources folder to put it in. Since this isn't a model behavior, we're not going to have it exposed or anything uh, in the inspector to drag on. Uh, so for now, I'm going to go ahead. I'm actually going to leave the game object part there. I'm going to copy it, put it up at the top, tab it in. But I actually want to comment it out just so I know I have to come back and do this. But right now, I'm not going to be working on it. Uh, rarity type. So we'll go ahead and we'll set this. So rarity is going to be equal to... Um, I'm just going to set it to common by default. All right, so line of sight, which is a Boolean value, by default will set to equal true. If I can spell it tonight. And string for description will be, uh, well, needs a string, or needs a description, we'll say. All right. So we've got some default values that we can work with there for debugging. Uh, let's go have a look here at the base cooldown timer. I'm just going to set that. What was it? It was a float, right? Yeah. I'm going to set that to, uh, let's just start off with two seconds. Uh, I'm going to put an F in there just so it knows it's a float and I don't get an error for having that decimal. Uh, the variance. I'm going to set the variance to 20%. 
So that means it can be plus or minus 20%. Uh, so we're going to end up uh, with a cooldown timer of anywhere between 1.4 seconds to 2.4, or sorry, 1.6 to 2.4. And we'll say float for the cooldown timer. Uh, this is by default going to equal to zero. And is ready or ready is going to equal to true to start off with. Uh, there we go. We have the basics done uh, for our constructor. If we go ahead, save that off. Let's go ahead and head into Unity just to make sure there's no errors. And we are getting some here. Uh, cannot be assigned here. And that's because we actually forgot to put the set methods in. So let's go back into Mono Develop, and it was cooldown timer and ready. Uh, cooldown timer and ready is right down here. So I'm going to come down and create a private set. And in here is where I'm going to have the code for that. We don't need that. And we're going to need a variable to work with this. So I'm going to come up here and say private float underscore cooldown timer. And in here, I'm just going to say underscore cooldown timer is equal to value. And in get, I'm just going to go ahead and fill this out while I'm here. And we'll just go ahead and return that value. So we'll go ahead, save that off. I'm going to just cut and paste this up to the top because that's where I like my variables. Uh, we're going to be putting some constants in up here. We're going to need one for the effects path. So while I'm here, I'm going to leave a comment about that. I'm going to add a path to the effects folder. And we're going to need another one for ready. So again, I'm going to come up here, create a private bool, underscore, I guess I really should call it is ready. That's what happens when you program too late at night. But anyway, ready is fine. And we're going to come down to the ready right here. Again, private set. And in here, we're going to say that ready is equal to value. And for the get, we will return ready. Now, the reason why I'm keeping these private is I don't want them to be able to be set outside of this class. I, these values here are actually going to be set during the instruction. So right here in the constructor. And then as we go through the updates, uh, if they need to be set, that's when they're going to be set. Uh, but anyway, that's both of them. So let's go ahead. We'll save this off. Let's go ahead and check in Unity again. See if the errors disappear. And of course they do. So let's head back over to our spell class. And these are the actual functions or methods that I want to have in my class. The rest I really just wanted to use uh, as properties. So we're going to go ahead and clean these up and turn them into uh, the syntax that I want for properties.